Frankie, we've got three bags from Germany. Um, box back. Yeah. All right, so we have three Freund Levens. Three Freund Levens. Freund Leven, I don't think that's German at all. We have never had a German Mac before. Never. Not one time. From noodles to strudels. That's right. I wish I had a strudel right now. I've got my trusty phone ready to help us with some directions Good. because it is entirely in German. Are you gonna use that same translation thing? The same to... Google Translation app I have used on the show before. Line it up. Shine it up real nice. Stick it straight up your Condi Awesome. That doesn't help me at all. Thanks. <laughs> a mental macaroni. You want to Google that word and see if it comes up with anything? The cheese. The cheese, dude. A type of cheese. Okay. It's a yellow, medium, hard Swiss cheese that originates in the area around a mental Cantonburn. I don't know nothing about no Germany. I know one thing about them, and I think you know what it is. Yeah, this is like an actual dish. Kasse Spatzel. Okay. It looks like the pitcher. A tasty homemade pasta tossed with onion and melanter cheese. A German version of macaroni and cheese. Okay. Kaiser Spatzel. Kaiser, it's, we're probably pronouncing Kaiser it wrong. Kaiser Sose. They're all macaroni and cheeses. No, I want to know what that middle word means. With three kinds of cheese. Oh yeah, three so this kinds. Is, this is three cheese. I've already measured out 500 milliliters of water. I'll have you know that Maggie is owned by Nestle. Nestle makes the very best, Germany. Cook over medium heat without lid for about 12 minutes. As advertised, I think they're all gonna be kinda oniony. So these noodles are very large. All right, now I'm gonna take my schnitzel. <laughs> no. And do what? The noodles are very unusual. So this is the German macaroni and cheese. Like this is what the German people might eat on a Tuesday. Now it's very oniony. Tell your dad to make a fire to take away some of that onion smell. Yeah, okay, should we talk about the situation? <sighs> <laughs> Obviously, oil is very expensive. Because we don't get, get street gas here. No, no street gas. We have to get oil deliveries. And to save money, my father makes fires in the wood stove, which is great because we have tons of trees that die every year. My father cuts them down. My dad does the same thing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, he's real into it. I think that it's a combination of fire, like, and the quality of the wood and the, the stove is it gets super smoky. And I am hypersensitive to smoke, like in any form. It doesn't matter if it's tobacco. But we have like burnings out in the backyard. Yeah, but I kind of embrace and tolerate it. And plus there's a constant huge supply of fresh air out there. Right, right. I can step away for a minute if it gets too much. Right. I don't like it at all in my house. I have mentioned to him that it's very smoky and that the smoke funnels right over here. And he also knows that I am actually taking steps to improve the situation. The chimney needs to be cleaned. I'm also gonna put a chimney cap on to try to increase the draft of the flu. In the meantime, there's a tool that my father has to open the door on the stove. It's a metal tool. And he will drop it on the bricks once he's done. And it makes a very distinct tingling sound. And I know that that's the time to rush and close the door because smoke's about to come. Yeah, we, we were here for it this morning. Yeah. He was like, uh, I'm gonna need, Matt, are you over by that door? Matt Frankie, could you please? No, Frankie. I went over there to, to get John's knife and then I said, uh, your dad's gonna need me for a second because this is a situation. It was, it was actually bad. I almost couldn't see your front door from this door over Holy here. Holy crap. Yeah, it was really bad. Usually it's just a little burst of smoke when he opens oh, it to no. put some more wood in. I hate these kinds of Macs as much as you hate Smoke. Really? Yeah, what are you talking about, really? What do you know about Germany? You ever been? No, I've never been. I have a coworker who still works with me who immigrated from Germany to work at Sweetcoin, which is a company I worked at before it got acquired. And he worked for a printer company there and we hired him in the US. He brought his family over from Germany, which must have been quite a transition. After many years, got his green card. Most of what I know is just a few stories that he's told. That's, that's my extent of German knowledge. Oh, that was a great story about how you don't know something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fine, cut it all out. What about that that's that highway that you can... Autobahn. Yeah, you can drive as fast as you want. But I don't think that you can actually go all that fast on it. It's a lot of straight lines, and you really have to stay out of the high speed lane. You're only in the high speed lane if you're going ridiculously fast, basically. Right, right. Do you have any German heritage? Yes. My father's mother, her last name was Reich. 100% German. Old Grandma Junt Reich. I, I just want to know what's up with the onions. Whenever we've made a really good home style, it always has onions, right? Right, but it doesn't. They're usually like not this strong. Overwhelmed by onions. Can I tell you something that I discovered recently that I've been quite enjoying? What's that? Select clips from Dr. Phil. That's a show that gets pretty funny. It, it is. It's a show that's been on the air for a long, long time. I've never even really knew what it was other than yeah. trashy daytime talk show. There are a lot of examples of times where either he's kicked someone off the show or someone has stormed off the show. Really? And th it's the best. Okay, thanks okay. so much for coming. Uh, that, I was very interested in seeing what happened here. There's one, like, the guy who played Xander on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, talking about alcoholism as a problem for, like, other people. Yep. And Dr. Phil was like, why do I smell alcohol on you right now? Oh, do you? Yes. Wow. 
I do. I smell alcohol on you. I don't have any alcohol in me right now, so. I don't know. I, I don't smell any alcohol. He's an actor, so he's li lying really well. He's like, did you have beers last night? And he's like, I did. I did. And when you had those beers, he's like, I'm done. And he, just, and he leaves. We're done. I'm not doing this. And, uh, Thank you, though. Thank you. Is this open? I, I got a report last night. Good for you, Doc. That, Good um, for you. Dr. Phil's like, the reason he has to run from his problems is because he has let the disease take over him, and I don't play games. If he's going to talk to me, he's going to get serious, because I don't play games. <laughs> he, always, he always says, I don't play games like that. Uh, I, I, the way that I've actually been exposed to some recent Dr. Phil, I occasionally watch episodes of PewDiePie's show, because he's oh, actually yeah. a pretty good entertainer. Yeah, and he invented whammon. <laughs> Did he really? Respect whammon. Respect, respect, respect women. Respect women. Respect women. One of his several shows is actually he will watch episodes of Dr. Phil. And one of the big memes is send him to the ranch because he'll send like yeah. these really problematic teens, you send them to this ranch where supposedly they go to get better. <laughs> no, I don't send her to the ranch. Program. Send her to the ranch. There was one where like a woman came on to be like, I'm here to talk about all these problems my husband has. Yeah. And Dr. Phil did some research and, and found out that she's a drug addict herself and, and he was gonna like just start dealing with her issues. And yeah. she immediately was like, nope, stop, you can't. You <laughs> and he's like, I'm gonna read an email from a friend of yours. And she's like, nope, and then she just leaves. Well, you haven't been fully forthcoming with us. Because I don't know. No, no, this, uh, yep. you need to listen to me. No, I don't. Or there's another one where there was a girl who, I think they were dealing with the fact that she had some online relationship. He said, is it true that you think it's one of the greatest love stories of all time, even though you've never physically met? And she's like, yes, it is. I'm writing a book about it, in fact. <laughs> there's like some chuckling from the audience and she's like, and you can go ahead and laugh and I'll be here laughing stock in your spectacle. And Dr. Phil goes, I'm gonna shut this down right now. <laughs> I don't play games. <laughs> I don't play those kind of games. You're very manipulative. All this melodrama about you'll be a laughing stock. I, I don't play games. And she felt really bad. She was like, is there anything I can do, Dr. Phil, to make up for what I've done? And he's like, no, there isn't. Let's go to commercial. I apologize that I offended you in any way, shape, or form. That was never my intention. Well, you certainly I... have. So Christopher, if you'll take Bailey off, it's good to meet you and I wish you well. Thank you. I'm not doing this. I mean, even though he plays in the melodrama business, yeah. He's, he, he tries to avoid accusations of extreme melodramatic. Yeah, I think he wants to keep it to, here are your issues within about a five minute yeah. analysis and let's send you to the ranch. <laughs> yes. There are always different drug rehabilitation centers that yeah. are very obscurely named. Like yes. Happy Meadows yeah. or... Fountain or, Grounds. Or like New Beginnings yeah, or, yeah. or First Light or... Ooh. We had cast somebody in Sexually Frank and we had the last minute recast them and I had found out like, from their mom that like they were in Florida without their phone, and Nina's like, they're in rehab. What else do you have to like go to Florida for for an emergency? Exactly right. Without your so. cell phone. Without your cell phone, rehab. yeah. Without I've watched exactly intervention. What I thought. <laughs> Why would you go to Florida without your phone? It, <laughs> it turned out that was 100% correct. <laughs> Craig, that one's looking pretty ready. Yeah, Kaiser Sose is ready to rock. These ones look like they need more time. I, I found a fork, because I don't play games. It's just a little al dente. I, I guess I've now tried it. Well, no, not really. Shh. It's onion. Remember we found about these if you let them sit after they're done cooking? Do they get better? The Washington Post posted something. We were sent this in by our friend Lisa. Perspective. We tried 20 store-bought mac and cheese brands to determine which is the best. Can you freaking believe it? And the absolute worst, it says. And it has a collage of mac and cheeses that we've tried. Yeah, we've only been doing this for, what, four years? Yeah. Their worst mac and cheeses were Lane Cuisine favorites, Amy's, Stouffer's Classic is the worst. They're one wrong. Of, one of the worst. Get out of here. This is 90s school lunch mac and cheese, said one tester. Well, what's 90s got to do with anything? Yeah. The best frozen mac and cheese is Joe's Diner from Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's Hatch Chili Mac and Cheese. 365 Organic Mac and Cheese. They're full of it. Ugh. They're sponsored. You come here for the authenticity. Trader Joe's Wisconsin Cheddar Macaroni and mm -hmm. Cheese. And then cr just Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. They don't know what they're talking about. It's not like super slimy, but. It looks more like a chow mein or something. So why don't we try the weird pasta one first? The one that looks like chow mein. Onion noodle? No cheese. Tastes like a chicken noodle pasta. Very oniony. But not in that really abrasive way that the English Macs were? No. 
It's kind of pleasant. I would eat this, but not as a macaroni and cheese. Let's move on to the more traditional shells one. It looks really dry, actually. It's got a cheese flavor. Is there like some pesto in there or something? Or am I being fooled by the green? There's pan? a lot of herbs, a lot of parsley in it. Yeah. I think it needed a little more water, a little less cook time, even though the noodles are pretty stiff already. I definitely prefer the uh, first one. Should we try the last one? Yeah. Big, strong burst of onion. There sh that should be on the front of the box. Bursts of onion. My favorite of these is the spatze. Oh. Which is, as we learned, basically translated to German mac and cheese. But again, it doesn't taste very cheesy. It tastes just like a good chicken pasta. Cheese is played way down. Onion is played way up. Do I recommend any of these if you're in Germany? Um, sure, if you'd like a, a, a non-macaroni and cheese, this one's pretty good. But if you want a macaroni and cheese, well, no. Move to the States. Move to the States. Respect women. Respect, respect, respect women. Respect women. Respect women. Respect, respect, respect women. Respect women. Respect women. Respect, respect, respect women. Respect women. Respect women. Respect, respect, respect women.